This is going to be a quick tutorial covering hard surface modeling inside of uh, Lightwave and just in 3D in general. This is uh, in another introduction video for the animation class at ASU, so I'm not going to go super in-depth into hard surface modeling. And generally, if you want to learn more about this, look up other things other than this tutorial because I'm not going to cover a whole lot. I'm just going to do a quick introduction to it for the class to get started. Um, to begin on this though, hard surface modeling is, actually this may not show up, okay it does, hopefully, I'll check the recording. Uh, hard surface modeling is sort of, it's it's modeling harder shapes than you normally would, like and by harder I don't mean like more difficult, I mean like the surface is actually like a harder surface or it's bent metal or something like that. Because um, a lot of times when you're going to do a shape like this, you want to use sub patching and the default sub patching in Lightwave makes things kind of look blocky and sort of like clay almost like if I uh, subdivide that a couple more times it doesn't when I subdivide this it doesn't look like a harder version of this it makes it look almost like a clay blob which is useful for like cartoon character modeling but for hard surface modeling where you want to model something more realistic like a car or some such like that it's a little bit it, it's not a good shape to work with but if you still want to use sub patching you can use this uh, so say here the way to harden up the edges on here is to give it more detail and uh, more polygons to flow around. Because defaultly, you just have these polygons here. You have four on each side all around on this thing. And that doesn't really give it enough detail to know what shape you want. It's just interpolating based off of where the points are. So you got to give it a little bit more. So let's say we start here if I select this loop and I'm going to do loop select and that's right, right, right arrow on your keyboard if you have the new version of Lightwave but if you don't you can go here to selection and select loop somewhere there it is so it's right arrow if you have Lightwave I think 10.5 or newer I don't remember when they added that or you could map it yourself either one and I'm going to edge bevel this and you can see that's creating another polygon along that line but let's watch what happens in subpatch when this happens. So we have it in subpatch. When I add that edge bevel, you can see it, it hardens up the edges along that side. Like if I was to stretch it out closer to the top, it's hardening the sides and the edges around it because it's getting more detail to interpolate from. So uh, that's a little bit of a broken shape. You wouldn't really want that. But let's say. I grab this here and this and I'm going to flatten these. Flatten one side of this a little bit. Just to prove a point. Okay, so it's absolutely flat here, but when we subdivide, of course, it's not flat. It's a little bit rounded and clay-like. So if we go here, select these, and I'm going to press E for extender plus, I think. That's going to create another section on there, and you can see how that hardened it whenever I did that. You don't really want to leave these in the exact same spot, though, because if you check this unsubdivided, you can see it looks exactly the same as before I did pressed E. So you, you're actually recreating this exact shape right on top of itself, and that's not really a good thing. Generally, you want to move it a little bit, and that way you have some more room to move around. I mean, they can be super close, but you don't want them to be directly on top of each other because that'll it'll it'll end up worse later. Like for example, if I then go later and I want to merge points somewhere, right now those points are sitting directly on top of each other. So when I merge them, you get this uh weird I think it's called a single point polygon or a two point polygon. Oh, this one's a two point polygon that goes along this side. And those are not fun to mess with later on, so generally I, I move it a little bit. But adding more detail like that to your sub patches is how you're going to get more de how you get harder edges and sharper lines. Like say if I wanted to uh let me load um hmm, I'll load this one. This is the head I was working on earlier. Um so right now, this is just in, um, this is not subpatched at all. So it's very blocky, but if I wanted to convert this to a subpatch model and start working with it, I sort of get this clay effect and things are weird and that may not be what you want. So you can go in and 
if you really do want to do subpatched. Uh, it's really up to you, whichever way you want to model. Some things are going to look much better subpatched, and most high polys are done in subpatched just because it's it's much easier and uh, more detailed. You can see there, I just extended that out, and it gave harder lines to this headpiece up here. And I can do the same along here. Extrude it and move it just a little bit and give it some harder shapes. And if I wanted to add a crease along the center, I could do this, select this piece, and uh, chamfer it, or edge bevel in this case, they're going to do almost the same thing. Or not do anything, never mind. Um, and chamfer. So, you know, sort of add another edge along that. It'll, it'll harden up the crease along there, because it's getting more detail to modify from. Uh, that's a pretty good introduction to uh, hard surface modeling, for the most part. Um, Honestly, if you really want to learn more about it, though, go look up other stuff in this tutorial, like I was saying before. This is really just to introduce people in the class to the idea of it and mention that it's out there. I'll show one more tool real quick, though. Um, a really useful tool for you doing this kind of stuff is Bandsaw Pro, which we have used before. But say you loop select across like that, if you want to make this whole area harder and have it follow the curves, you can use... Uh, bandsaw Pro, which is under subdivide, Bandsaw Pro, and then in you can move it to different areas. You know, if you want to harden it at the bottom, you bring it down there. If you want to harden it at the top, bring it up there. And you could do multiple ones of these to get a harder line each time. And if you, if you really wanted to, you could slightly extend the line out, like uh, like so, get a little bit harder of a shape or mushroom it down at the bottom, whatever you want to do. Uh, most of it's going to be just messing around with it. You'll get to learn how the shapes sort of uh, interact with the subdivision and what it does. And then once you're done with all of it, you can leave it in subdivision or you can choose to control D and freeze the subpatch. And you get all this extra detail down here for if you wanted to subdivide again later. And it ends up in a much harder shape. So uh, that's the basics for it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and let me know, but, uh, do look this up outside of this if you guys are interested in it. So see you guys next time.